if you think about it, the immune system has a really difficult job because it has to tell the difference between what is harmful to the body and what is not harmful to the body. So we talk a lot about a recognition. The immune cells, many immune cells in the body have proteins on their surface which can recognize a pathogen, which is great. And hopefully these immune cells don't recognize self molecules, self proteins, for example, because those are not pathogens. We shouldn't recognize self and we shouldn't attack self. If we do recognize and attack self, that's going to be an autoimmune disorder where the immune system recognizes self molecules and it thinks that they're a pathogen. So they begin to unleash an immune response. And we're going to cover that in, a, in the next uh, chapter. But uh, so that's bad. What we would really like is for the immune system to recognize non-self molecules, uh, molecules on the surface of viruses or bacteria or parasites, uh, and recognize and attack those, uh, unleash an immune response. So a non-self molecule that is associated with a pathogen, we want the immune system to recognize that. The, an issue arises, though, if there is a non-self molecule that gets into our bodies, which happens all the time. We're eating food, we're breathing in things, we're putting things on our skin. All of these are non-self, but we hope the immune system doesn't recognize those and attack them because they are not pathogenic. The food we eat, the things we inhale, uh, if they're not viruses or bacteria, we don't want the immune cells recognizing them and responding to them. Unfortunately, for some individuals, uh, they have um, an immune system which recognizes non-self molecules that aren't associated with pathogens, but uh, the immune system thinks it's an infection. So the immune system unleashes the response. And this would be known as an allergic reaction or a hypersensitivity reaction. When the immune system recognizes, recognizes the molecule um, that is not from a pathogen, but responds with an immune response. So that is a hypersensitivity reaction. The immune system is being hypersensitive to some molecule in the environment that is not necessarily uh, linked to a pathogen. So there are four types of hypersensitivity reactions that we're going to cover. Um, probably the first type is the most uh, important one because that's the one that we typically think of when we think about immune uh, or allergic reactions. And type 1 hypersensitivity reactions typically involve, actually almost always involve, in fact, uh, the antibody IgE. It's one of the antibody isotypes. Uh, we talk about IgM and IgA and IgG. And IgE uh, is going to recognize something as foreign, as non-self, even though that thing is not harmful. And what IgE is going to do when it binds, it is it's going to trigger degranulation of mast cells and other granulocytes. And when these cells uh, release their granules, they're going to cause inflammation, either localized inflammation or systemic inflammation, which can be very harmful and lead to death. So when we think about the antigens, or if we really want to call them allergens, the molecules that the immune system thinks are harmful, but they're not really, they shouldn't be. Um, things like uh, pollen, uh, peanuts, dairy, uh, any of the molecules you typically associate with uh, these severe allergic reactions um, that individuals can die from or, or get rashes from, um, many of these are type 1 hypersensitivities, and we're going to cover those in future videos in, in great detail. So type 1 reactions involve IgE recognizing a allergen. Type 2 reactions involve the antibody isotype IgG recognizing an allergen that is affixed to the surface of a human cell. So IgE is um, binding something that it's not self, it's uh, coming from uh, the environment, but it's not a pathogen. The IgG thinks it's a pathogen, it recognizes it, and it unleashes an immune response. Specifically, we know IgE um, can activate complement pathway, can also trigger opsonization. So uh, we'll see some instances like uh, with penicillin, individuals who are allergic to penicillin can uh, have a type 2 hypersensitivity. A type 3 hypersensitivity 
also involves uh, a person making IgG against a molecule that's not a pathogen, it's an allergen. And these molecules are soluble. They're floating around the body in the humors, in the blood, or in the lymph, or in the interstitial fluid. And they're not from a pathogen. They might be an injected protein, for example. So some individuals who generate antibodies against uh, certain medications that are proteins, they would have a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction. A type 4 hypersensitivity reaction involves uh, solely T cells, does not involve antibodies. So individuals make a T cell receptor that recognizes a um, peptide and the T cells trigger either a um, CD8 response or a CD4 response. And um, we're going to see those in terms of individuals who are allergic to uh, metals like nickel, for example, or who have severe reactions to uh, poison ivy. So these are the four types of hypersensitivity reactions we typically talk about. We'll cover each in a later, uh, more detail. We'll spend most of the time talking about type 1 hypersensitivity reactions.